说的是，是,是有政策的，它是也是有阶段性的。那现在我们的孩子去了美国，王思我们上So, according to your interview, is what was their life like in Shanghai? For almost all of them, it was very difficult, but not deadly, and that's an important uh, distinction to make. Almost all, well, all the odd people I talked to survived, and almost all of the refugees who got to Shanghai survived there. They didn't starve, and they were not killed. Uh, and that may not sound like. Uh, well, that's what would have happened if they had been uh, stayed in Europe. But their lives were difficult. They did not have enough money. They did not have enough food. They worried about the future. They didn't know what would happen to them. After the Japanese took over Shanghai at the end of 1941, the refugees worried that the Japanese, who were allies with the Nazis, uh, might do something to them. Uh, that never happened. The Japanese never touched uh, the Jews. So uh, their lives were difficult. Uh, what made their lives, uh, what allowed them to survive, was, were really several things. Uh, money was sent to them, lots of money was sent to them from Jewish groups in the United States especially through the Joint Distribution Committee, which had an office uh, in Hankyu. Uh, lots of money was given by Jews who already lived in Shanghai from the Baghdadi and the Russian communities. I mentioned the school uh, that was set up by the uh, Kaduri family. So those things helped these refugees survive and get through the war when it was very difficult for everybody in Shanghai to get food. But the other thing that helped them survive uh, was that the Chinese people in Shanghai were not anti-Semitic. That happened to Jews who escaped Germany and ended up in France, or who were in Poland, or who were in many, many other European countries. So just the fact that the Chinese people tolerated the Jews and were sometimes friendly to them and sometimes even helped them, that enabled them to survive. Just now you mentioned the relations of Jewish survivors here in Shanghai with the local people. So uh, do you have more stories on how Chinese people helped them at that time? There were some Chinese people who who certainly helped refugees. Uh, there were some refugees got jobs in Chinese companies. Uh, some refugees made friends with uh, their Chinese neighbors, and those people taught them how to, for example, uh, light the little coal stoves that you use to cook in Shanghai. Uh, but most of their neighbors, most of their Chinese neighbors, were not able to help them because they were also struggling to survive. But what they were able to do was be friendly. Uh, lots of, especially the younger people, uh, the people who were younger refugees, have told me stories about playing with Chinese children, going to school with Chinese, um, teaching Chinese English, learning Chinese language, from uh, some of the natives. Uh, one woman who worked in a bank uh, told me and told me a story about some Chinese men who also worked in the bank with her. And after the Japanese took over Shanghai, they took over the bank. And these Chinese co-workers uh, 
would listen about what was happening in World War II and then tell this refugee woman that I spoke to about what was going on. So that's the kind of help and friendship that it was possible for uh, Chinese people, even poor Chinese people, to give to the refugees. There were some friendships, real friendships, that developed between Chinese people and refugees. Uh, I talked to a couple who were both doctors. Their names were Greening, and they met some Chinese doctors who knew how to speak German, because those Chinese doctors had studied in Germany before the war. And they became good friends with these uh, Chinese doctors. And then uh, those Chinese doctors took them around to Shanghai and showed them things, showed them things that average people wouldn't see. And so th those are, that was real friendship. A few people, a few refugees told me of going to Chinese people's houses, uh, eating with Chinese families, even going to celebrations like weddings. But this was uh, unusual, partly because very few of the refugees were able to learn Chinese. So they depended on meeting Chinese people who could speak English or German, and there were some of those. Uh, do you think the historical event of Jewish people migrated to Shanghai uh, is worthwhile to made aware by a wider public? I certainly do, and I'm very happy that there are so many people in China who want to learn more about what happened and also to spread the information about Jewish refugees in Shanghai as widely as possible. Uh, I have worked a lot with the people at the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum, especially curator Chen Jian, and uh, I've seen the traveling exhibit from the Jewish Refugees Museum come to many cities in the United States. And many people in America, and also in Germany and in Israel, have learned about Jewish refugees in Shanghai from the traveling exhibits of the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum. So I feel that this was one area where Chinese scholars and Chinese researchers are cooperating with Western researchers like myself to bring this story to the public. And as a, a professor of history, uh, do you believe, oh, sorry, <coughs> what do you believe? as a professor of history, why do you believe it is significant for people to look, in, to look back into historical events? I think we cannot understand our own world unless we understand its history. Uh, and certainly the history of the 20th century, uh, the history of the Holocaust, uh, Chinese history in the 20th century, these are very important things to know about if we want to understand today. Uh, China is one of the most important countries in the world, but I think many Westerners do not understand Chinese history, and so don't understand what the Chinese are doing. Uh, so, for example, there are uh, many people in the United States who fear China, who are worried that the Chinese are trying to take over the world or that the Chinese are enemies of the United States. But because I've studied just a little bit of Chinese history from this work about Shanghai, I understand uh, better, I think, what the Chinese government and Chinese scholars and Chinese people are doing. Because I've been to China, I can see the friendliness that I've been uh, that I've enjoyed every time I go to China, and the uh, willingness of Chinese people to work with Westerners. So I think the history is indispensable. We have to know history 
if we want to understand our world. That's why I teach history. Okay, thank you. And Stephen, uh, do you have any final words to say to the Chinese people? Well, yes, I do. Uh, and that is that I liked the Chinese people long before I ever went to China because I knew about Jews being able to survive in China during the Holocaust. Uh, and uh, there were many countries, of <coughs> course, persecuted Jews and killed the Jews. And there were a few countries in Europe which uh, helped Jews survive, like Denmark and Bulgaria and Italy. And I have very good feelings about those places. I've never been to Bulgaria, but if I ever go to Bulgaria, I will start out with good feelings about them because Jews were saved in Bulgaria. And that's the way I feel about China. The fact that Chinese people never had anti-Semitism, that they always accepted Jews, that makes me uh, feel good towards Chinese people. And I think it should make Chinese people feel proud of their own history.